Hello, hello everybody. It's Thursday, y'all. Today we're doing video number 10, The Hope of Hartford Quilt Block. You'll see that up here on the screen. So great to see everybody. Give me a second. I'm going to try to pull up this video. Hopefully I can follow along in the live chat. Yay. Hello, everybody. So today we have, um, sorry, I was just eating a piece of candy because words are hard for me in the morning. Actually, it's almost lunchtime here. I have a few questions lined up for us today that should be fun. If you're sewing along with us live today, I'm going to try to slow down and go nice and slow so that you can follow along today. Hope of Hartford. This is going to be a, a 10 inch quilt block today. So great to see y'all. Hello, hello everybody. Yes, we have some fun questions lined up if you want to play along in that. Most of all, I hope that you know that uh, this is our social hour. We're here to uh, break the distance of social distancing. <laughs> and uh, yes, I'm just here to be a happy distraction in your day. And hopefully we learn something along the way, right? Hello, everybody. So yes, you should see the block that we're making up on the screen and all of the pieces. And at the end of this video, I'll be putting up the pieces in the block for tomorrow. So grab a pen and some paper so that you can write that stuff down. I can't wait to show you that block. Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm gonna give it just a few more minutes so people have a time, have time to see the video and come on in before we get started. Let me show you, I did a practice block yesterday. Isn't that pretty? Yes, we're doing a partial seam. I don't want you to be scared though. I'm gonna show you how to do it. After today, you're gonna to be like, yeah, I can do partial seams. Piece of cake. Hello. Wow, it's so great to see everybody. So yes, this is block number 10, our 10th day of going live. I'm still waking up excited to come live. That's a good thing. Let me uh, just give you a heads up on some of the quilt blocks we're gonna be doing in the upcoming week. In no particular order, the maple leaf block, the house block, card tricks, Ohio star and log cabin going to look into the flower basket block and see what see what that looks like but those are some of the some of the quilt blocks that we have to look forward to so as we get started today if you have friends who are love quilting or friends who just started quilting i would really love it if you share this video with them and so that they can follow along with you and make these blocks that would be awesome Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So let me show you my pieces. They're already cut on the table. I'm using fabrics in the same color way as the example block today. So I have all of my pieces ready to cut out. And I'm going to give it just another minute before we get started so that you can get all set up and ready to go. <clears throat> Y'all are so welcome. I enjoy this time with you. One of my goals this year actually was to come live, be more live on YouTube and my Facebook. So these blocks are really helping me uh, get used to coming live and it's getting easier and easier as we go along, right? But it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I love spending the time with you. So here are my pieces. 
Let me get my ruler and my rotary cutter because we're going to start cutting here in just a second. I want to thank my moderators. Thank you, Ms. Chantel, for moderating and keeping an eye on the chat. And as we get started with the block for today, just keep in mind, it's really hard for me to keep up with the comments because they're going through pretty quick. And I'm trying to focus on all of this. <laughs> so just know that uh, I come back in the evenings and I get to read all the answers to your questions. And it really gives me something to look forward to to in the evening time. So yes, I do get to see all of the conversation later. If you have questions that maybe I can answer while we're live, uh, put them in all caps and that helps me see them. And then, uh, yes, if you're watching this on the replay, I would love it if you answer your questions in the comment section down below. Who's ready to get started? I have my machine all set up. Set up your machine with a quarter inch seam allowance. Go ahead and get that ready. The very first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna start cutting up some of these pieces, okay? I want you to grab the two five and a quarter and five and a quarter blocks. To save time, I'm gonna layer them one on top of the other. just like that. We're gonna cut these blocks, we're making two cuts. We're gonna cut them diagonally in both directions. Okay, so that's the first thing that we are doing. I'm gonna go ahead, make sure I'm in the screen. <laughs> we're gonna line up the edge of our ruler to both corners diagonally we're going to cut those blocks in this direction I put a new blade in this and it always wants to act funny there we go yep it cut <laughs> my cutter always wants to act funny every time i put in a new blade we made the first cut just like this let's put them back together and spin it around and just like that we're going to cut in the opposite direction i think it's a little bit safer if i stand up to do this <laughs> All right, so our five and a quarter and five and a quarter blocks, we've just cut into uh, little triangles. I have both blocks, we cut them both at the same time. Let's go ahead and set those off to the side and let's bring over our two four and seven eighth blocks by four and seven eighth blocks. And we're gonna cut these two, except this time we're only making one cut Line up all of those raw edges nice and straight with one another. Just like that. And this time we're going to cut from corner to corner, but only one time. Okay. So there are both of my purple blocks cut in half just like that. Now we're done cutting, so I can put that away. Now we're going to lay out this block, okay? And I'm going to ask my first question. So uh, if you're not busy sewing, would you rather go out to the movies where you can get the movie popcorn drenched with butter <laughs> and some candy? 
Would you rather go to the movies or would you rather stay home in your pajamas and watch Netflix? Which one would you rather do? Go to the movies or stay home in Netflix? That's our first question for today. And now we can start laying out this block, right? We have a uh, one, two and a half by two and a half. We have four, two and a half by four and a half. And then we have all of our triangles that we just cut. And let's go ahead and lay this block out. I have my example block so that I don't get anything mixed up. We're gonna make four units with all of these pieces. So we're gonna take the two by four inch block. We're going to, let's see. We're gonna take one of our background blocks and line it up just like this. Let me look at my example. <laughs> purple star, okay, purple star. Dun, 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 dun. We're gonna get it here in just a second. It's gonna take my mind a second. There we go. We're gonna put together our units just like this. Of course, this is going to look different for each one of your units, right? Because yours are going to be different colors. So we're just going to repeat this four times, except each time we're going to rotate it just one way, one time in a different direction. And we're just repeating. Like that. Yes, I think usually I would say that I would prefer to stay home in Netflix, right? But I've been home, we've been home for so long, I'm thinking maybe I would prefer to go out to the movies. <laughs> right now, I think I'd rather go to the movies and eat some popcorn drenched in the butter, right? So there's our third unit. And then let's see, this will go there. That will go there. That will go there. That will go there. And this little lonely two and a half by two and a half inch block goes right in the middle. Just like that. So there are all of our pieces. I'm going to give you a second to catch up in case you're laying out your pieces with me. And then I want you to grab uh, like a water soluble marker or a heat erasing marker or maybe a pencil because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next so that we don't get these pieces mixed up when we go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna give you just a second to catch up to where I am right here. Oh, it's so great to see everybody. Hello, hello. Let me see if we have any questions. Just scanning through. Looks like we're good with the questions. Oh, I cannot wait to go back tonight and read all of your answers. Hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. So here are our pieces laid out for the Hope of Hartford block. I want you to grab something to mark with that's not going to mess up your fabrics. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do first, okay? How we're going to start to assemble our little four units. I want you to take this part of your unit. For me, it's the white fabric. It's part of this triangle here. We're going to flip it right onto the triangle right next to it. We're gonna do that right in this seam 
right there. Now for some of you, you it might be easy if you want to pin these together. I'm just going to be lifting them up and bringing them to the sewing machine, but for some of you, you might want to put a pin in these two pieces. I want you to take your marker and on the seam that you're going to sew, just like this, this is going to be your seam. I want you to make a little mark just like this so that when you bring these to the sewing machine, you don't accidentally sew this seam and you don't accidentally sew this seam because that would be really easy to do. It would be really easy to mix them up. Just make a little mark right there so that we're sewing the right seams when we move them over to the sewing machine. Now with your quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna go ahead and move over to the sewing machine. And now we can pick these pieces up <laughs> and we don't have to worry about getting them all mixed up, right? We're gonna come over to the sewing machine. I'm not pinning mine, so I have to make sure they're lined up once I get over here. Your pieces should go into the machine just like this. I'm going to sew right on this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that one right there and I'm going to bring over the next one. We're going to do some chain piecing. Lining up those edges. Lining them up and sewing one right after the other. You'll have four of these little triangles. Try to stay as accurate as you can, sewing nice and straight. Good morning, everybody. So great to see you. That was our third one. And now we can bring over this last one. That little mark helps you stay Stay organized and you're not accidentally sewing the wrong seam, right? It would be really easy to sew the wrong side. And there we go. There's our first four units. Just like that. So here we are. I'm going to cut these apart. Cut these apart. Let me wake up my iron so that we can give that a second to warm up. And what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. And I like to press this seam to the dark side. See how easy that was? Half square triangles just like that. So for our second question, while I'm going to give my iron a second to wake up, <laughs> it's like, no, I was sleeping so good. Uh, our second question for today is, uh, what is your favorite restaurant? Like if you, a thought popped in your head, oh, let's go out to eat tonight. What is your favorite place, your favorite restaurant to go and eat at? And you go so much that they actually might know you by name and you might know them by name, first, ba first name basis, your favorite restaurant to go to. 
I'm going to go ahead and take these four units and press them. And again, I'm going to be pressing them to the dark side. Favorite restaurant. Oh, I cannot wait till things get back to normal and we can go out to eat again and actually eat in our favorite restaurants. We have a couple of them. I've been craving fajitas for two. Fajitas for two have been on my mind. It's funny how you really want the things that you can't have, right? I've got one more to open and press. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and just cut off this little dog ear that's sticking out at the point of our triangles. So there's one favorite restaurant. There's two. Ooh, I just saw teriyaki chicken. That sounds delicious. <laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. It's almost lunchtime here, so you can imagine. Well, I think about food most of the time anyway, but. You can imagine I'm starting to get a little hungry. So there we are with the first part of our units. This is what you should look like at this point. The very next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the unit that we just got finished pressing right onto the larger triangle. Just like this. Now, if you find it helpful, go ahead and mark this again, but this time we should be sewing the longest side, right? There's two shorter sides, and then there's a longer side from point to point. That's the side that we're actually sewing. If you want to go ahead and mark that, it might be helpful so that you don't forget. We're going to be sewing from edge to edge with a quarter inch seam allowance this seam here. And so I'm going to go ahead and start doing that. Yes, I'm looking forward to lunch today. I don't know what I'm going to have. We're going to bring this over to the sewing machine. It's going to be hard to see because my machine is white and this top fabric is light. So it's, it might blend in y'all. I'm sorry. We're going to line that up and just sew it from edge to edge. We're going to bring over our second unit. It might be helpful if you pin these. Slide that right under and start sewing. And our third unit. Yes, I cannot believe we're already on block number 10. That just seems crazy. It seems like we just started this. All right, and one more. We've got one more triangle to piece together. And now 
now we can take that away from the machine. Ooh, pancakes. I just saw the word pancakes. <laughs> I'm going to cut these apart. And you know what? Before I even press them, I'm just going to go ahead and cut off these dog ears because I know we're going to have them. I'm just trimming off the little part that would form that dog ear right towards that seam. Careful if you're doing this not to cut into your seam. <laughs> Yes, I would love some fajitas for two with some chips and salsa, chips and queso, chips and guacamole, chips and white sauce. <laughs> I'm torturing myself, really, is what I'm doing. All right, at this point, we should have a square that looks just like this, a big triangle on one side and two smaller triangles. I'm going to press this. And this time, again, I'm going to be pressing to the darker side. This little thicker seam, that first seam, should lay flat right onto our larger triangle. We'll do that for each one. Our second question is... Out of the first 10 blocks, including today, which one is your favorite that we've done so far? I'm going to press these and then check for questions here in just a second. That way it'll give everybody a chance who's sewing along live to catch up. Look how pretty those squares are. All right, we're coming right along, right? So far, easy peasy, right? Dun, dun, that should be like that, like that. <laughs> Make sure I'm not getting turned around here. There we go. I'm going to give you a second to catch up if you're, if you're sewing along with me live. Pamela, you've been able to find dies for your Accu quilt. That's awesome. That match for the cutting. Fantastic. I bet you that makes it a lot faster, right? I do not have an Accu cut or Accu quilt. Uh, maybe one day, though. Oh, it's so great to see everybody. Oh, I cannot wait to read about your favorite restaurants. Your favorite blocks so far. My all-time favorite that we've done so far from video one to today has been the Churn Dasher block. However, I think Hope of Hartford is going to be number two. I think it is. At this point, to finish up our four little units, we're going to take this two and a half by four and a half and we're going to flip it right into place. And it's going to be much easier to figure out 
what side to flip it on if you lay out your block just like I've done. We're flipping it right onto the block just like this. There we go. Now we're going to take that to the sewing machine and sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. So there's one. There's two. I have the wrong bobbin in my bobbin case today, y'all. I think I do. We have one more seam to sew. Bobbin's making all kinds of noise. That's letting me know that I have my Singer Patchwork Bobbin in my Juki machine. <laughs> I need to change that today. I'm going to go ahead and cut these apart. And now we're just going to open up and give that a press. I'm going to go ahead and press it just like that with the seam going towards this two and a half by four and a half inch block. So like that, we have our four units, right? So let's lay them back out. There's one, and then we're gonna turn it one time. There's the second. We're gonna turn it one time. There's the third. And then we're gonna turn it one time, and there's the fourth unit. Here's our little two inch block right in the middle. I'm going to give y'all a second, let's see, to catch up, because now we're going to start to assemble all of these units right around this center square in a circle. Oh, it's so great to see everybody. That's so awesome, Jill. Thank you so much. Yeah, my channel is growing. That's exciting. Thank you all for subscribing and following along. Which Juki model am I using? Mine is a Juki HZLF600. There's a couple of different models in the HZL series, and mine is the F600. Uh, I did do a little bit of a review when I got this machine, so um, that's a video on my channel, and I love it. I really do. Some of the things I love about it, you can lower the feed dogs. I thought I would really love the knee lift, and that was one of the things that I wanted in a new machine. I haven't used it, but maybe two or three times. <laughs> but yeah, it, it has a knee lift. And uh, you can lower the feed dogs. I love that it has a setting for a quarter inch seam allowance. 
So when I get ready to sew, I just push a button and it automatically goes to quarter of an inch. <laughs> yes. So this is where we should be. Let me just check to see if there's any more questions before we move on. Wanda has a question. Hold on a second and see if I can find it. What is your display board made from? I should do one too. Wanda, you mean the wall up behind me? We bought insulation board from Home Depot or Lowe's. And uh, we taped it together. And then to cover it, I bought a king size gray flannel sheet off of Amazon. And I have it pinned and taped just stretched around that board and then we screwed it to the wall and your blocks just stick right to it. There's a video for that on my channel too. I think that is all the questions. For our last, last question of the day. All right, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. I'm gonna slow down. I get so excited and I'm nervous. I, try, I, I do think that I rushed through it. I'm gonna slow down. Can your Juki sew vinyl? Uh, I know that it sews through six or seven layers of denim. I do know that. I've never sewn vinyl with it, but I'm sure that it does. All right, I'm gonna to try to slow down a little bit and really take this part nice and slow and easy, okay? I'm gonna try my best. <laughs> Let me take a sip of water. We're gonna do the partial seam, y'all. All right, so let's make it a little less confusing and let's just put off to the side three of our units. Let's take this two and a half inch by two and a half inch square and just line it up so that the edge, the raw edge, lines up nice and straight with this unit. <clears throat> You'll see that when you put this block here with this block here, once you sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance, <clears throat> that's going to give you a continuous seam from the edge of our block to right here that will be the same length as this block here, okay? So we're going to flip this block right onto one of our four units. And we're going to line up the raw edge on both sides. I want you to take your little marker I'm using a darker marker so that you can actually see it, hopefully. And I want you to come in right here. Sometimes I'll go in halfway, but in my practice block, uh, I realized that that's a little bit too far. I want you to take your pinky, the first little bend in your pinky, lined up that bend with the edge of your block, come over and make a little mark just like that. I'm gonna hold that up so that you can see. It's just a little tiny mark that far away from the edge of your block. Just a little smidgen in, about the first length of your pinky joint, okay? I'm gonna line that back up. So right here is our mark. We're gonna take this to the sewing machine. We're gonna start on this edge with a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to sew until we get to this mark and then I want you to stop. When you get to your mark, stop and then take three or four back stitches and lock that in place. Then we're gonna remove this from the sewing machine, okay? You'll be able to see me do that right over here. Make sure your raw edges are all lined up Right here is my little mark. I know it's gonna be hard to see because the lights are so bright over here. <laughs> Start at the 
starting at the raw edge. Go ahead and take two stitches in and back stitch off the block. We don't normally do that when we're making quilt blocks, right? Go ahead and let's lock that in. And we're gonna sew to this mark and stop. So I'm right at my mark. I'm gonna take three back stitches and then go forward three and I'm gonna take that off of the sewing machine. So what it actually looks like is part of your two inch block is gonna be loose and flappy. And part of it is gonna be sewn just like that. Now we're not even gonna bring this over to, this, to the pressing board, okay? We're just gonna do a finger press. Let's just open that up and then a finger press it towards your middle block. The other end of your block should be open just like that. Just doing a finger press. Now when you bring in the next block, look at that. Your seam should be exactly the same length. So that's the next thing we're gonna do. We're gonna flip this right side over. You can pin this if it makes it easier for you. And we're going to sew the complete seam this time from edge to edge all the way down with a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure everything's all lined up nice and straight edge to edge <laughs> that little singer patchwork bobbin in there does is not happy that it's in my juki machine all right we can take that off and let's take a look and see what that looks like so just like that we have two of our four pieces sewn on to this middle square now that we've attached this section to our middle square, you'll notice that this seam here, and I'm just finger pressing at this moment. So let's finger press that down. You'll notice that this seam is now the exact same as this unit right there, right? So we can go ahead and flip that into place. And we're gonna sew that seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Crazy little bobbin. <laughs> it's a noise maker. All right, we have our third. That's all right. We're almost done, Sue. I'm going to just keep on going. We only have one more seam to sew, or no, two more seams to sew, right? So at this point, I'm just finger pressing. I'm finger pressing this seam towards the unit that we just detached. So I'm just gonna flatten that down with my fingers, just like that. Now we have one more unit to attach to this middle block, right? Remember we have left this part of our two and a half inch open. And so now I'm just gonna flip this right, right out of the way, just temporarily, just like that. Now we have a seam that is the same size. We're gonna flip this right on top of it. Now 
and your seam should be just like that. It might be a little tricky because that seam wants to bend over because we so we've already done part of that seam, right? So you're going to have to hold that flat. You might want to put a pin in there. Just flatten it out. That's one of the reasons why we didn't press it so that you can get it nice and flat. And we're going to sew this seam right there. If I go slower, it doesn't make as much noise. <laughs> make sure this block is nice and flat on your machine. Did I ask my last question? If you had any superpower, if you could pick a superpower, any superpower that you could think of, what would be your superpower? I think I would fly. I think I would love to fly. That would be my, uh, my superpower. All right, we just finished this seam here. I'm gonna finger press that open just like that and guess what we only have one more seam to do we're going to fold that back just like that and we're going to pick up let's that's our first unit we started with right we have part of that seam we're going to fold this down just like this we're going to open up this seam a little bit or just try to flatten it out really is what I'm trying to say. We're gonna match up the raw edge here with the raw edge right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put a pin in that. Keep that in place just like that. Right there, the little stitches we're going to put our needle down right where we left off. I know you can't see that. It's kind of far away. But if you open that up a little bit, you can put your needle down. That should be a quarter inch right there. And we're going to take a couple stitches, back stitch, and lock that in place because we're starting in the middle of this block. We don't want those stitches to come undone. Go right back down into there, lock them in place, and then we're going to sew all the way from where we left off to the edge of our quilt block. Yes, if I had to pick a superpower, I think I would like to fly. So we're just gonna open that seam up the best that we can, and we're gonna find that with our needle and lower our needle right where we left off with those stitches. I'm gonna take a couple stitches and then I'm gonna back stitch a little bit. And now we can finish sewing this last seam. And guess what? That was our last seam for this block. So we're gonna open it up and that is what we look like. You just did your first partial seam. For many of you, this is not your first partial seam, but for a lot of you, this will be your first partial seam. 
that's it. So now I've just been finger pressing all the way around as we went. I'm just gonna see which direction all of these seams wanna go in. Get my iron heat warming back up. Let's see, they wanna sorta just lay down just like this, right? This time I'm gonna scoop my iron over so that you can watch me press this block. I think that might be helpful. Don't mind my dirty ironing board. <laughs> I do lots of glue basting and art quilts. It needs to be washed or replaced. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and start pressing this block. And it kind of wants to go around in a clockwise motion, right? I might be steaming up the camera. <laughs> now I'm just going to turn it over and make sure everything is nice and flat and give it one more good press. There we go. There is our finished Hope of Hartford block. I love that so much. It actually might replace my favorite, the Churn Dasher. My new favorite might be the Hope of Hartford block. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave this on the screen for just a second. I'm gonna go through and see, go through and see if we have any questions. If you do have a question, putting it in all caps and repeating it. We have a few minutes if you want to ask again in case I've missed it. I cannot wait to start seeing everyone's Hope of Hartford block over on the Facebook. Uh, once this video is done being live, I will put some links in the description box for the creative crew group if you want to join that group if you haven't already and you make this block i'd love to see it yes i think that is so pretty 10 inch quilt block mimsy uh you were intimidated by the partial seam, but you think you got it. Yay. Yay. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to actually go through and read all of your comments. They go by pretty quick. So, all right. Y'all are so welcome. I love spending this time with you. I love spending this time with you. So here is my finished Hope of Heart for Block. What I'm going to do next, let's take, uh, in case you missed it, what this would look like repeated as a quilt. Isn't that pretty? And in here, in just a second, I'm going to pull up the stuff that you need for tomorrow's block. Yes, I would love a quilt with the Hope of Hartford block repeated. You could repeat the same colors in every single block. Or you could do it scrappy where each one of your blocks is a different color, right? Wouldn't that be gorgeous? That would be gorgeous. Yep, I think this block has replaced my favorite. I was undecided. <clears throat> I made a practice block yesterday with these colors. And using these colors, this block was my second favorite. But now that I see the purple one done, 
it's my new favorite. <laughs> so yes, that's what it would look like as a full quilt. I'm going to go ahead. Let me eat this piece of candy because my mouth was getting all dry. I'm going to pull up what you need for tomorrow. The friendship star. It's going to be a 12 inch block. I'm going to do mine in patriotic colors. And uh, this block would lend perfectly for a quilt of valor quilt, right? You are free to use any colors that you want. Uh, and I want to make a note. We're going to be using three colors tomorrow. So that's what the quilt would look like if you repeat the block several times. Using three colors. I want to make a note about the measurements that you see on the screen. Yes, Janet, you could flip it on point. You could flip it on point and it would be gorgeous. <clears throat> on the measurements that you see on the screen, you'll see some stars next to the seven inch by seven inch pieces. Those two blocks, there's a blue one and a white one. I'm cutting mine at seven inches by seven inches. Those are gonna make half square triangles tomorrow. If you make your half square triangles a little wonky and you're not trusting that they'll come out perfectly, go ahead and cut those two pieces with the stars next to them at eight inches by eight inches. And when you're done with your half square triangles, you can square them up and make them pretty once you're done sewing them together. I'm going to be cutting mine seven by seven and just hoping that they come out perfect. We'll see. <laughs> but yeah, if you have a hard time with your half square triangles, go ahead and with the measurements with the stars next to them, cut those at eight by eight. And though that's everything that you need for tomorrow's block. Tomorrow's block will be video number 11, our 11th block together. Y'all are so welcome. Uh, tomorrow's half square triangles. I've already made a practice block of this too. Uh, no, we're not doing the easy eight method for tomorrow's blocks. We're going to do something different. This is my practice friendship star block. This is tomorrow's block done in a different color way than what you see on the screen. Tomorrow we only need four half square triangles. So um, yeah, we're gonna do it a little bit different. Yes, the friendship star block. And then to wet your whistle a little bit, Coming up in no particular order, we're going to do a maple leaf block. We're going to do a house block, card tricks, Ohio star, log cabin, possibly a flower basket block. We'll see. And uh, yes, that's what we're doing today. Let me hold up my Hope of Hartford block one more time. Isn't that so pretty? My new favorite. I cannot wait to put that up on the wall with the rest of them. It's going to be pretty. Now, y'all, if you have any questions and, uh, and you missed the live, if you have questions about the partial seam or how we put together our units for today, feel free to ask down below. And I just thank you all so much for spending some time with me. I hope I've been... Uh, a little bit of a happy distraction in your day. Most of all, though, most of all, I hope you learn something new or you're going to try something you've never tried before. Most importantly, I hope that you've been able to chat and uh, chat down in the comments if you're watching on the replay. I want this to be a way that we can connect with each other while we're all staying home.
Okay, y'all. I hope you have a fantastic day. I look forward to seeing pictures over on the Creative Crew group. And just keep in mind, as we're closing for today, I know many of you are going to knock out today's block. And you're going to go ahead and knock out the Friendship Star block. If you make the Friendship Star block today, if you can hold off posting pictures of that block until after tomorrow's video, I think that would make it a lot less confusing. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm off to go eat some lunch. All this talk about favorite restaurants. Have a great day. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, here we go. All right, everybody. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.